This is Sung and I'm the principal and director of Sky Academy and I want to now wrap up everything that we've done on basic arithmetic. So we've now finished the unit of work on basic arithmetic which really does set you up for the rest of the uh, the two unit mathematics course, right? So I want to now um, go through with you an overview of all the skills that we learnt um, in um, basic arithmetic. Now, the first thing that I really did with you was to introduce you to the real number system, right? Now, the real number system, like a number system is really just um, a pool or a set of numbers that we are pretty much going to work within the realm of, okay? And we looked at all the different um, number systems within the real number system that make up the number system, yeah? So all the little subsets, all right? So we started off with natural numbers. Now, natural numbers are like whole numbers that you encounter in nature, right? So like you might have four sheep, right? Four sheep, so the number four is what we call a natural number. You don't really see half, half a sheep walking around or 0.3 repeater of a sheep walking around. So we looked at natural numbers, which are basically whole number numbers, right? Um, we also kind of considered that zero is, um, you know, is, is a special um, number because some consider it a natural number, some don't. Um, we are going to consider it as though it is, yes? Um, now, then we looked at integers. Integers basically are natural numbers that have a direction both positive or negative, yes? So, um, you know, you see this occur basically on a scale, on scales, yeah? Uh, so, for example, a temperature scale might have um, numbers that are above zero degrees and numbers that are below zero degrees, yeah? So you've got integers, positive and negative, and we learnt to basically work with positive and negative um, numbers or, or integers uh, when it comes to the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. After integers, we recognised that there was another type of of number system, and that is what we call rationals, our rational number systems. And um, we saw that uh, that in the word rational is the word ratio. A ratio, again, is a, a comparison between two numbers, yeah? A ratio is where you compare one quantity with another, yeah? So basically a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a comparison between two numbers. In other words, a partial, a number that, that uh, can be divided into parts, right? So fractions, decimals, and percentages make up your rational number system, right? Rational numbers, fractions, decimals, and percentages, um, you know, depending on how they're expressed, whether they're expressed as a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage, right? They're the irrational numbers. We looked at recurring decimals within um, decimals, and we worked out how to convert recurring decimals into fractions. We looked at fractions in general, mixed and improper fractions. Now, an improper fraction is one where the numerator, the top number, is bigger than the bottom number. A mixed number is one that is expressed as both whole, a whole number, with a fraction component, with a remaining fraction component, okay? So um, improper and mixed numbers, and we learned to convert between both of them. We also learned to add and subtract fractions, which requires us to make sure that the denominator is common to both, right? So uh, we looked at fractions where the, common, where the denominator is common, and we looked at adding and subtracting fractions where the denominator wasn't common, and we had to make it common, yeah? And then we looked at multiplying and dividing fractions, which involves us um, simplifying um, by cancellation, yeah? We can cancel uh, factors that appear on both the top and the bottom, right? Or bottom and the top. We can't cancel top with top, we can't cancel bottom with bottom, we can cancel diagonally, yeah? But really, any top with any bottom that has a common factor, you can cancel out the, the common factor when multiplying, yeah? When dividing, you just need to remember to invert and multiply or multiply by your reciprocal is another way of saying it, okay? So we looked at um, fractions, decimal, uh, fractions there, right? We also looked at decimals, yeah? 
and adding and subtracting decimals and multiplying decimals. And this led us on to other basic algebra skills, which included, um, for example, significant figures um, and scientific notation. Now, if you remember, scientific notation is a way of writing numbers that can be unusually large or unusually small. Yeah, uh, and it uh, and it com com um, it com composes of a number between one and ten at the beginning, which is expressed as a decimal, followed by um, a magnitude, right, an order of magnitude, which is ten to the power of a whole number, right, either a negative or a positive whole number, an integer. Okay, um, we looked at significant figures, right. Um, and that helps us out when rounding numbers to certain number of significant figures and there were rules around that. Go back and check out that video on significant figures if you, uh, if you want a refresher on that. And we also looked at order of operation, yes? So sometimes you are given um, an algorithm or a calculation that you need to do and it, in, it includes both uh, multiplication and division, it includes addition and subtraction, it includes brackets, indices, all sorts of stuff. And we've got to work out how or the order in which we work out that the steps, uh, the order of the steps in which we work out that calculation, right? And the guiding principle is bid mass, bid mass. You don't just go from left to right um, uh, willy nilly, what you do is you apply the steps in the word. Bid mass, the acronym bid mass, where B stands for brackets, you do them first, any sort of brackets, you, you do them, uh, working from the inside out or left to right. You do your indices, right, index, which includes square roots um, and squares, cubes, any sort of power. You do your indices next. You do your division and multiplication next. Um, not division first, not multiplication first, but division and multiplication in the order that you see them from left to right. And then you do the same thing with addition and subtraction. Any addition, remaining addition and subtraction operations uh, you do from left to right also. You don't necessarily do addition first or subtraction first. You do them in the order that, that's remaining from left to right, okay? So we looked at bid mass, yeah? And then finally, what we did was we looked at irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, um, Another word for irrational, well, another, um, the main form of irrational numbers that we looked at was surds, okay? Surds meaning numbers that are either square rooted or cube rooted or rooted in some way, shape or form. We worked out that surds are in fact irrational by proving that root two is an irrational to begin with, right? We learned how to simplify surds so that if there are any whole number squares, uh, that are a factor within a surd, you take them out as whole numbers, right? As the, the rational part of a whole uh, of, of the surd. You, we learn to add and subtract surds, yes? Uh, multiply and divide surds. And we learn the distributive law with surds, yeah? When basically you're, wal you're working out um, um, an expansion um, which involves a, uh, a number out the front multiplied by surds inside a set of brackets. Yeah, so we learned to use the distributive law. And we also learned how to rationalize the denominator. And in fact, it's a really helpful way to express a third or a fractional third um, is by rationalizing the denominator, making, making sure that the denominator is a rational number. And to do this, sometimes we need to multiply by what we, what we know to be called the conjugate third of the bottom, okay? So we looked at conjugate thirds. Now, if you need a refresher on any one of these, please go back to the relevant episode from which it comes, yeah? But that is an overall summary of basic arithmetic, yeah? So I'm gonna stand to the side now, let you take that all in, all right? That's a pretty good summary of, of all the skills that you need in basic algebra, which will, along with the skills from basic algebra, sorry, basic arithmetic and basic algebra together, those skills will really set you up nicely to do the rest of the course, especially when we start looking at calculus, okay? Um, we really need to be good at algebra and arithmetic, okay? So let me stand to the side like I said. Thank you very much for watching. Well done on making it this far, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Thank you.